Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Stand Gamers, and welcome. So over the last few weeks, you guys have been absolutely hammering my personal message box with how to build various different drop pods and escape pods. And I thought I'd give you my opinions on how you can build a really great drop pod or escape pod. Now, the first thing you need to take into consideration is that a drop pod and a escape pod are two very, very different things. An escape pod helps you pretty much survive a massive attack on your ship, or if it's severely damaged, you can escape. And with the supplies aboard, you should be able to establish yourself. Where with a drop pod, it's the whole idea of getting equipment, machinery, tools, supplies into a location extremely fast. And now that's basically out of the way. Let's go on to the first thing you need to consider. And in my opinion, this is how many crew members it's going to actually be able to support. Now, it's great. You can stick as many seats inside one as you want. But I've kind of came to the conclusion that six is the best possible number. In terms of space engineers, you're not going to have many people in these pods as it is due to the server sort of restrictions, but you can't really carry... Each one of these chairs is going to have to carry the supplies for that individual, and that means that six of them is going to require six times the supplies, and in a survival situation, if this was an escape pod, finding places to keep them supplies, the oxygen, the ammunition that you might need to fight off spiders or whatnot when you're on the planet. And more importantly, if you're building an escape pod, you need to have the supplies to build yourself an assembler, refinery, and some way of powering it so you can start again. If you just jump out, then you're just going to be stranded. You're not going to be able to build anything, and you're going to be stuck. Now, there's two very smart ways of doing this as I pan back through this. You can either have all the supplies within crates on the escape pod, or you can build the escape pod so it can be broken down and then turned into the supplies that you need to make that machinery. The only downside to having it made out of that stuff is if it suffers critical damage when it goes into landing, then you really do risk losing a lot of them supplies. If you have them protected in a crate inside, then the advantages of that are, well, it's pretty much incredible. You can basically start survival from everything within them containers. So after we've had a quick look at the crew, we need to talk about when it comes to landing this thing. If it's an escape pod and you bail out in the middle of space, then you're going to have one very important thing to do. You need to propel yourself to a location so you can start your survival. And that's why it's very important to have some way of propelling your escape pod. Drop pod, not so necessary because it means it could be dropped above a planet's surface or in the location and it can drift or just float down. And then the only thing you need to really then consider is the parachute. So if we go around the back, We'll have a look at the parachute. This is something that a lot of people tend to really overlook. How how they're going to get their drop pod to stop. Are they going to use thrusters? If you use thrusters, then it requires more resources, more hydrogen, or whatever you're going to use aboard. You could use the in-atmospheric thrusters, but then it's going to require more power. And then these drop pods get more and more costly. Where the parachutes are a very cheap way of actually getting things down to the ground very fast. I like to go with four, because then you've got a redundancy of a redundancy. If one fails, one gets shot out, one gets burnt off. Then you've got another two to rely on. You really need to work out how heavy the drop pod or skate pod is and see if the parachutes can kind of deal with the capacity of that. Other things to take in consideration are ex other sorts of power sources. So we've not got a reactor in this. We've actually just got a battery so it can be charged up and then deployed. We've also got an antenna so we can communicate and show our location. Another very important thing, there's nothing worse than jumping out or landing in one of these drop pods and not being able to find other members of your crew. Now, a third thing is an automatic deployment of the parachutes or your slowing down sort of assets. So this could automatically deploy the thrusters to slow you down or automatically deploy the parachutes out the back in this case. Because what tends to happen is as you're being tumbled around in this thing going towards the ground, you can kind of lose track of where the ground is coming. You miss the button while you're sitting in the chair and next minute you have a mouth full of dirt. And these are just the basics of building a drop pod. There's a, a real lot to think about. Now, something is how is this drop pod going to land? In this case, the parachute's going to actually pull it up so it'll land like this. Now, if it lands like this, we're going to have to consider how we're going to get out of it. And at the back, we have the door on this angle, and we actually have ourselves a little bit of a ladder that deploys down. Let me spawn my character in. And we can deploy that ladder like that. So even if this drop pod is slightly on the sides, that I'll show you another feature that you can do to actually stop it from going on the sides. You see these little ramp bits that stick out here. If the drop pod leans on one of these sides, it basically rolls back 
using its own weight the only little issue with the rolling is this sensor on the front this sensor really needs to be kind of recessed in the design or else you'll get some weird things where it doesn't sit quite flat on the ground then another thing is is the ladder going to push too far off the ground as well but for the moment this design from what i've tested works quite well we've got access through the sealed door into the compartment and you're probably thinking the compartment is the wrong way up but remember you only need quick in and out access of this so there we go we're in our seat we're ready to go and if i pop the spectator camera you can see how the legs are exposed through the bottom and he's sit there he's sitting there quite comfortably in that seat as well as the other astronauts that you can imagine doing so so there there's the beginning of things to consider we've got the power we've got the supplies that we need to rebuild if it was an escape pod if it was a drop pod we're able to soak up the damage and get out of the pod more importantly when it comes into landing there's just a few of the things that i want you to consider when you're building in this particular design i've actually got these flaps that stick out as well so when it comes into the land it's just a bit more of a fancy thing but you could imagine that these actually cause a little bit more dragging in a realistic term and would slow it down but in terms of function they add absolutely nothing to it anyway let's give this one quick test to see how functional it is so for this final sort of test i'm just going to drop a number of them in so i've dropped one or two going extremely fast so that one might have some issues that actually deploying its parachute yep that's not going to deploy its parachute in time because i flicked it but the other guys here are deploying very very nicely so even though i dropped them at weird angles they should all come down very evenly, very straight. And the terrain underneath, if it's not too flat, we should have a nice, safe landing. The speed's not going too bad here. Let's see what we get. Oh, that one broke. That one survived. That one survived. And that one survived. I don't understand what caused that one to break at all. And more importantly, all of these have come down flat. So if we actually bring our character model over here and we activate his little leggies... We should be able to deploy the ladder and actually get up and check out this drop pod. So let's pop off and it would be an easy in and out from there. I don't know what happened to that one particularly. It could be the ground. It could have just been it happened to hit some weird angle or Clang just got involved with it. But most of the testing that I've done, they all come down extremely safely. And that's just my take on building yourself a drop pod or an escape pod and some of the things and ideas that I'd like you to include. If you guys have any better ideas, I've got a really cool design in the workshop already. I'd love to see it. Drop me a link in the comments below or tell me what you think and I'll see you next time.